episode number 80 of the other side of the ball welcome 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 uh as you can see it's just myself and uh nox 25 or should i say now with this new promotion the new division manager of a seven found nevada mr nox 25 nox 25 live in the building uh so first off sir congratulations on the uh, promotion i appreciate it i appreciate it so let's just jump into it like what um what just made you decide to you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and rock with what uh what what process led to you eventually uh taking this uh position which was once held by our colleague chris beer who's on assignment along with uh scott the vagin mccorkle he's on assignment so hopefully uh those guys are all right so just real quickly just what uh led you to take this uh position um it was one of those where i had put it out there in the beginning of the season uh that i was looking for of course a new team or whatnot um i guess a lot of people didn't really take me serious so i figure what else is there for me to do within the league where i can still have some type of involvement because of the the love of the game um i had different opportunities on being on uh being a guest as well as being a guest panelist uh here on the other side of the ball and even with those opportunities that i got within that um it just made me want to keep being involved so once i once i heard um that they were looking for a new division manager i always thought to myself like someone of my caliber why not um why not me you know what i'm saying what makes me different than anybody else um with being able to just hold uh an important title like such or just any in any circumstances you know what i'm saying so uh like i said i took my shot at it i think i did a damn good job you know what i'm saying i had the support of a lot of people who i really probably wouldn't even thought of even supporting me you know what i'm saying but um i definitely had a lot of support uh so that even made me want to do it so even just wanted to i don't know I, I didn't formally make a post and do all of that good stuff uh, just because I wanted to end up doing it this way uh, and just letting everybody know that I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we're going to do what we have to do to better the league um, for the players, but as well f as the division itself. So with you taking this position, um, what are some of your goals that you have in this new position that you have um, taken to? What What's your What's what's what goals do you have set out to uh, enhance the division and help enhance the league? Uh, first and foremost, like I said, just making 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 it more about the players. Um, and when I say that, I know exactly what I mean. I'm not saying I want to make it like a players league and stuff like that. But again, um, just like I brought up, it's a lot of players out there that feel like they don't get heard or uh, there's questions and concerns that they feel may not be able to get it across to, uh, let's just say the, the, the higher ups. Um, so just want to be able to do what I have to do to keep promoting and keep helping the league actually grow and be taken serious. So for the players that may not know who you are, um, what would you say to them? I'm just Knox. Uh, I've always been myself. If you know me on the field, if you know me off the field, <laughs> you know I've always been myself. Um, I'm not a biased person. I don't have favorites. Um, I don't treat my homies better than I treat uh, any person that I don't know. So uh, expect me to be equal and me for be uh, excuse me and for me to be fair all the way across the board. Well, it, it seems like um, you are very serious. I mean, I, I know you're passionate about this league and want to help out in any capacity that you can, but it seems like you are very uh, serious and determined to um, take this new promotion and, and run it to the best of your ability. Um, like you said, and definitely was shown there was a lot of support um, for a lot of people in the league to 
take over this new position. So I just, you know, I commend you on it because, I mean, I know it's not an easy task um, having to be the ears for a lot of players and trying to give feedback to the higher ups and say, look, maybe if you do this or, you know, make suggestions to make this division and this league better. So, I mean, I definitely uh, support you on that conquest and certainly uh, they definitely will know how you feel when you have a, a concern or a grievance to air. That's for certain. <laughs> hey, but like I said, we'll keep it fair. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to make sure it makes sense. Uh, we're not going to, we're not going to, for even the ones that feel like they have an easier access to me. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't even too many. Uh, it, it don't work. It, it's not going to work like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've always been the same and I've, I've been pretty fair, uh, even with voicing my opinion. I keep it respectful, but I keep it professional. Well, you certainly were uh, making having many tasks this past Sunday, which um, first off to our fans that were uh, going to view us for watching long four games, we apologize, but there was uh, situations beyond our control that we could not handle. And unfortunately, um, week two was canceled. Now, hopefully somewhere down the road, those three games that were not played um, will be made up. But as for the one game or not, well, I guess you can say 29 minutes and 81 seconds of football that you saw between yeah, the uh, Insomniacs and the uh, Hunters. Um, that will result in a win for the Insomniacs. So that final score or that score of 50 to nothing, that would have been the halftime score, is considered a final score. So that game will be official in the in the win column for the Insomniacs, which puts their record to uh, tune on the season, which was a very impressive display, um, considering that you had um, – Scooter doing his uh, Sean McVay, as he was saying on the sideline, uh, he was coaching that day, and he had um, Munchie playing quarterback along with uh, Zach Luciano, and they put up an impressive 50 points. Um, in a sense, in one half of football before uh, operations were shut down beyond our control, it was a, a very unique setting, um, certainly a unique setting um, as far as being in the broadcast booth, simply because of the fact that uh, you're so used to being up and above, and you're right there at field level, it's almost kind of like um, being at ringside watching WrestleMania or being at ringside watching a boxing event. So that was very, very unique, to say the least. Um, and then just hearing all the, uh, the discussions and coaches and uh, player talk on the sideline, which gives you a very different insight as you would if you were in the booth broadcasting. But um certainly was a different, unique setting, but... um. We will be back this upcoming weekend, and we do have a location, and we will give that location um, before the uh, podcast is over. But um, real quickly, we're going to recap and go over all the scores that happened all around the league that um, did get to play this past uh, week in week two. So last week um, on the 7th of April, we had the – Volcanoes, the Olentangy Volcanoes shut out the uh, Octane, or it was the Octane that got their first win. And hello, Mr. Ashmore. How are you? Welcome. Uh, of course, Steve, Steve Ashmore, who takes fantastic photos. Steve, who takes fantastic photos. Um, if you want to get your photos, please um, talk to him with Ashmore Media. He will uh, get your photos. And like I said, he takes some awesome, fantastic photos. Always good yeah, to but see make uh, sure Steve when. Make uh, my bad, my bad, Deb. But make sure whenever no, you get pictures from this man, make sure you tag him. Don't just post the pictures. Don't be stealing yes, them off please. the page. Make sure you give, show love. Give the man some he credit because, like I said, yes, let, give the man some credit because he is out there, um, pretty much putting his um time on the uh on the dotted line to give you guys the great photos that you see on his page. Because he is out there going hard. Because, I mean, in between games, he will come up into the booth, take out his SD card, put a new card in, grab some lenses, and go back out there. Doesn't matter what kind of weather it is. Um, yeah. He has a passion for it. He has a passion for what he does and taking pictures, and it shows. So, again, I mean, tag the man, give him some support, and uh, support Ash more media. Because, um, like I said, he, he takes some very good stuff. He, he really, really does. The uh, Octane got their first ace NFL win as they shut out 
the uh, Volcanoes by a score of 40 to nothing. As you know, the Insomniacs shut out the uh, Hunters 50, no 50 to nothing, a 50 burger. Um, also, the uh, Nightcrawlers put up 74. And we appreciate you, Steve. The uh, Nightcrawlers put up 74 as they beat the O Town Orange 74 to 12. Uh, the Covington Highest go to 2 0 as they beat the QC Crush 44 to 18. Um, and while we were uh, awaiting to see if we were going to play or not, um, we gave you updates between the Animals and the U. The U went on to win that game by a final score of 6 to 45 as the U goes to 2 0 as they prepare for their big battle this upcoming week against the BIC. Of course, if you saw the last two meetings between these two, do. That's gonna be a good one. Both games were right down to the wire, very, very last play, and I expect the same thing <laughs> in uh, this Sunday's upcoming game for sure. Um, the Watchmen get their first one of the year, uh, bouncing back after um, after taking a, a loss against the OU. They beat the uh, B DC Buzz twenty nine to six, and the. Cincinnati Chaos beat the Columbus Explorers 49-6, and the BIC against the Orange Renegades win by a, the BIC goes to know they could win 58-12 to over the East Orange Renegades. But uh, thank you. We appreciate you for uh, riding with us as we, uh, for the time being, will come via live on StreamYard. But nonetheless, we are live on the other side of the ball YouTube page and live on the other side of the ball facebook page so whichever outlet that you're watching us in um appreciate it um again it's just uh me and knox 25 on this evening as uh chris and scotty are both on assignment but hopefully they will be back with us next, next week. week and i think knox is going to a different outlet i think yeah 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 I ha uh, yeah i have to it's lagging over oh. here and i don't like it okay <laughs> all right all right stand by no, you're good. I'm still on. Yeah, okay. Well, I just added you to the stage of the other one. So cool. We'll mute that mic. And again, for uh, Mr. Blaze, hit that like button. So, again, as mentioned, um, the only meeting of the year between the U and the BIC will take place. Certainly part of the uh, game of the week. This upcoming week here for April the 14th. And as mentioned, the last two times these two teams have played each other, um, it has gone right down to the wire. Um, and definitely, I think a lot of us expect the same thing, although this is a different dynamic now. Of course, Huff returns to, the, to which he's won multiple titles with the U in the years past. But, of course, the BIC, they've also reloaded. Big man, how do you see this particular matchup uh, playing out with these two? Uh, ob obviously, these two teams that that obviously want to get back in the championship picture and um, make a case to uh, bring back the title back to the Northeast. Coming from the East, you know what I'm saying? So they're they're in a in a position to want to get back into let's just say the spotlight of course they've already had it but to really be a part of let's just say uh what's been going on um i think it's going to be a good one and i think it's going to be just like any other game where it's, it's going to be super duper close um and it's going to be something to watch. I'm excited to watch that one, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a fun game to watch. And we definitely will be keeping close eyes as uh, that's going to be in a prime game of the week slot. And um, thank you, Steve, because it was very different situations to prepare for this past Sunday as we were going to start on one side of the field, but one side of the field didn't have power. And we had to move to the other side of the field because – that had power, so uh, certainly um, our appreciations to Mel Carey, Flash Media Sports, and his guys for uh, making the stuff come together. I mean, as they were they were filming from up top, or we had Derek on top in a ladder, for lack of a better term, and a megaphone that his mom, Mrs. Duncan, 
brought to um call out the time because obviously there was no scoreboard so we're trying to keep time and of course uh use the graphics to give you scores and updates and whatnot so i mean it definitely was a team effort and appreciate to all the hard working men and women that came out there and uh contribute even though it was only for just in a sense one half of football um but in that one half you saw um the insomniacs even when they don't even when their quarterback decides he wants to coach that day, they can still put up points and, and points galore as they put up 50 on the Hunters. But as uh, Chris Scott and myself said in various in various broadcasts, the Hunters definitely have some pieces, and they can definitely put the work together and just add a few more pieces, and they really can be an exciting team um, for years to come because definitely they're, they're like over the top. They have, have a lot of heart. They don't quit. They play. They play hard. And um, – Definitely shout out to everyone that is uh, definitely um, that did the job into um, doing what they do in making uh, in bringing this uh, to you live on your streaming or TV platforms, however you watch us, wherever platform you use. We appreciate it and we say thank you. And Knox finally has the uh, setup that he wants in his background. But not necessarily, which is why I haven't got back on camera, because I'm not able to access those settings from my iPhone. Oh. Right. Well, that's not good. I know. But as long as, but as, long as the people can hear you, that's, that's the important thing. All right, cool. So, I mean... We, you you can just do the background and I can just you know show show my light skin self but um I definitely think it'll be I, I definitely think it'll be a close game in regards to the U and um and the BIC as a uh, coach Lee chimes in with his uh, support for his beloved boys OTT uh, we will preview the upcoming week we have some very very interesting matchups and ours and our, our slot in the game of the week, I think, is really going to be a dandy. We'll talk about that later. But um, I just think the Huff factor might be enough for the U to get by the BIC as the U won both of those games last year against the BIC. Like I said, both games in close fashion, down to the wire, innocence, the last play of the game. So I definitely um have the U winning now, by. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, now, we, we talk we, – we... For the past couple of weeks, or at least since the season started, right, um, we 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 brought up Huff a lot, right? Correct. Um, Correct. I watched them play. Um, I've seen them, you know. But who would be another player that you get excited to watch coming from the East Coast? I really like watching the Wolverine on the Watchmen. I like the way he plays defense. Um. Last season, he played for the Animals. I liked Baby Joker, um, who uh, found the end zone a lot. Um, obviously, Ashanti Worthy is a must-see TV when he does the throne returns and, uh, of course, just gets in the open field. Um, Mr. Conversion, I mean, he's a lefty, but, I mean, he just has a very nice, smooth delivery. Um, I like Buck. Obviously, uh, people from the Nightcrawlers logo, Davis, obviously, Bagway, which we saw firsthand. Yeah. And, um in bullhead city so i mean there's there's like the west coast has their style the east coast has their style um that's another good name too uh steve another another good name um mr mosley is a very exciting to watch um i mean they have a lot of big men yeah that um, I, 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 have a lot I, of uh well I like you were I like saying myself. go ahead. No, I was gonna say myself, because you mentioned big man, right? And I was waiting to see if you was gonna mention a certain one. Mm -hmm. Uh I find a lot of interest in the humble beast. Yes, yes. If I if I'm not mistaken, that, well, that's his name. That man is that's a big boy, but that boy runs. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, well, I mean, it's the same thing. It, it, it's the same thing I say about um, Sal and um, and Mr. Branch. Like, big man should not be running like that, full speed and can, and are very shifty. Like, big men are not supposed to do that. Coach Gray, what's happening? Appreciate you. 
and again, um, and again, um, please don't forget to uh, head out to the Chicken Shack on Boulder Highway where you mentioned sick with it, and you will get a ten percent discount on your chicken tenders or chicken or whatever you want to get or whatever you eat from the Chicken Shack on Boulder Highway. Don't forget to mention sick with it for your ten percent discount. Don't forget that. Shout out to Coach Gray and sick as they have a very uh very good game this upcoming week like i said we'll preview that as the podcast goes along um nonetheless it's myself double a anthony alvarez and uh knox 25 live with you here as a uh, chris and scotty are on assignment but hopefully they'll be back with us next week um so for the time being you will catch us on uh, the stream yard platform again we are live on the other side of the ball youtube channel and the other side of the ball facebook page so Wherever outlet that you're watching from, we appreciate y'all. Thank you for chiming in and um, saying hello. And um, just going over a recap of what happened around the league with scores. And, of course, giving our little preview about the BIC and the U, which, of course, is their only meeting of the season this upcoming Sunday, which should be a fantastic game, of course. You can hear Matt Ryan, Corey Hammond, and Big Rob Fame on the call. And, by the way, uh... Again, happy birthday, Corey Hammond. Hope you had a fantastic birthday, and hopefully your loved ones uh, spoil the heck out of you. So uh, I hope your birthday was better than your game, because that was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that was fucking terrible. I just want to <laughs> say, we sat here and we listened to you criticize every freaking team out here in the positions and what people are supposed to do and so on and so forth. My guy. Oh, I expected more from you. I expected <laughs> more from you. I really, I really expected more from you. I'm highly disappointed. You type better than you play. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am disappointed. Oh baby. I am disappointed. Oh well. I mean. That was horrible. That is how in the time that, that I that watched, is. Dub, in the time that I watched, he uh -huh. had more picks than he had completions. I swear to God. Oh boy. Well free I mean, line. Hey, his lineman not blocking. I could have sworn he said something about linemen needed to block before they release. And if they would have just chipped the and they would have, yeah, you should have been teaching your guys the same. Yeah. That shit is horrible. <laughs> That shit was horrible. <laughs> great fucking promotion. You're a great promoter. But you... Oh, my friend. <laughs> that game was dog shit. Excuse my language. Uh, that's all right. Well, here comes another promotion. Um, again, don't forget, um, Coach Lee also has Dripping Soul, which, again, if you uh, mention OTT at Dripping Soul, you receive a 12% discount. And, again, I'm speaking from experience. Um Dripping Soul is very good, and I'm a huge fan of their red beans and rice. So if you like red beans and rice, please go to Dripping Soul, which is on Main Street, which you have to make that quick left because if you don't make that left, you will miss it. And now, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, joining us from his assignment, wherever he may be, coming on to say hi real quick is uh, the man of the hour, the tower power, the one, the only, the slick back Pat Riley style hair of one, Mr. Derek Duncan. Hi, guy. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm about uh, 17 apple moonshines deep out here in North Kakalaki, North Carolina, on a work trip. But uh, heard you guys uh, were short. Uh, had the two most talented guys in the league on the podcast, but were short on talent to interview. So I thought I better pop on and say what's up. Oh, what's going on, Derek? What's going on, man? Just trying to be like you when well, I grow up, man. We, we appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Mr. Duncan, if you can um, let the adoring public know, um, what led to your decision in um, letting and giving Mr. Knox Two Five Live a promotion to be the newest division manager for the Nevada division? Well, look, uh, Knox had been showing up and uh, doing good things for the uh, podcast and you know, really contributing in spots and had mentioned that he was looking for a spot to hold down this year. And uh, to be honest, when I heard his take on the podcast before last, when he was, you know, talking, speaking real facts, talking about, you know, that this lady doesn't really understand who we are and how we get down. And 
you really got to understand that these people don't really understand who we are. Really put, putting himself in the shoes of other people, that having that type of humility to be able to, to think along those lines, those are the type of people I like to rock with a lot. And then uh, when I put the call out to say who was interested in, in uh, gaining this position, who, who has this talent, he threw his hat in the ring and other people were nominating him. And he was available to help out on Sunday. And then I'm sure, Dub, you saw it firsthand. Yes. Every single issue that came up, he was the first person to react on the radio and got into it. Like He just came over to me and said, Derek, I got this. Don't worry about it. I'll tell you what's up. Would go handle it, report back to me. And it was, I mean, handled himself flawlessly that day. And at that point, I just said, look, man, your heart's in it. You're, you're, you're the people's champ already anyway when it comes to the players. Your, your coach that you just left vouched for how good of a person you are, and he's doing it on this podcast right now. And I said, man, th- there's probably no better person I'd rather have riding alongside with us than Knox. So that, that's how that all came together. Well, as start, mentioned start earlier, to do that right in front of you because I know it feels weird, but thank you for being a part of us, brother. No, nah, you you good. I, I I got my cam down because of the conversation that we had earlier, but I'm I'm in a pretty solid setting. Uh, so if we good, then you know what I'm saying. Uh, I appreciate it definitely. You know what I'm saying. Like I said earlier, um, I, I feel like the way I view myself or I have viewed myself, um, I felt like. Again, people like me have never really gotten a chance to really lead like they know that they can lead, but not in a in a destructive or even in a controlling way. You know what I'm saying? But to lead for the better and to actually know and understand someone's view of of what they're trying to even accomplish. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a part of that and they're willing to have you, why not? You know what I'm saying? So, again, like I told you before, I appreciate it just even giving me the opportunity. And I appreciate everyone that did vouch for me. Look, man, we all appreciate each other. And to be real, like, Knox came at me season before last and with some drama, like, hey, you need to fix this shit. And we chopped it up, like, real, real talk where it was a little bit heated for a minute. But cool heads the whole time and just straighten the shit out. So I knew the type of man – he was i didn't understand what his leadership qualities were going to be like until he stepped up and said he was interested and he completely nailed it so knox to, from me to you brother super happy to have you involved i know the future's safe in your hands the way it's looking right now. i really appreciate it no definitely i appreciate you so uh real quickly boss wanted to get your thoughts on the upcoming matchup this sunday between uh the u and bic which appears to be their going to be their only meeting of the season as we know the last two meetings were right down to the wire in a sense the last play of the game um how do you see that matchup um coming into for this upcoming sunday between the u and bic so that's a tough one on paper just looking at the uh players that are involved and the quality of opponents that they both played it should be uh, a walkthrough for the U, just based on how they've carried themselves so far this season. But the history of these two teams, it's like Yankees, Red Sox. It's like Ohio State when they get together. Every chip is on the line, and this is the only game that matters to them. I would say that it means more to both of them to win this game than it does to win the Natty. So when these two teams show up throughout all the records, it's, it's going to be legit. But uh, my pick for this game is – would be the U, but don't be surprised if BIC sneaks it out at the end because of the, their, their style of play. Uh, but what I have seen out of the U and them flexing and going to a little more flag style with the back attack and doing a little, a little more misdirection when they were the best at misdirection in the league, hands down, going into the season and, and kind of taking some of those flag concepts and bringing them to A7 and ex- executing them extremely well. Man, I'm, I'm a little scared of the U. I'm telling you, I, they were already great team with when they had Huff before he went away kind of figured himself out they figured themselves out and and both humbled themselves to come back together to realize they're better together that's a hard combination to beat man they're they're looking out for each other and that's hard to beat let me ask you let me ask you this though Derek would you because you you mentioned the back stack right you mentioned uh the flag style would you say uh with Trey going to BIC and them already having who they have in the backfield now, could they incorporate the same style of play? 
or what, do you think they would stick to what they what they already know and what they run? They could, but they haven't put that on tape. So BIC has been running traditional offense. Make, they start beating you downfield to the point where you need to get into a zone a zone defense or into mm. the man defense so they can have a chance to rush the quarterback. And as soon as yeah. Terry sees you in man, he just waits for you to turn his back and he's gone for 60 yards and, and you're done. And then they have the ability to, to flex on you like that and, and can run the ball. They have not been doing it yet this year, which yeah. is why I think that you will win. Because, uh, But having a guy like Trey Robinson on the squad, if they were to utilize him in the backfield or at the wing spot and do that, it, it could change it up for them. But I haven't seen them execute that on the field. And to try to break that out for the first time against their nemesis, guys that are uh, just absolute – demons on the defensive line i would i would hate to see them try to try it out for the very first time yeah it's that but you almost need it because the the one thing that the back stack does is if you do pitch it back you've now changed the rush point so you had three guys that were chasing one guy now you got one guy chasing one guy in the back stack and everybody else standing there what to do so i've always said if you've got somebody in the back stack you blitz them off the start and yeah you gotta you, shoot that you, break you gotta shoot that regardless yeah so, you mean you don't let him get that kind of separation you wouldn't do it if he was on the line so you run there and get there when the ball gets there, and you can change change the change the launch point, change the attack point. And you got a different thing, but that's that's how my defensive mind works. So I'm super excited to see this game. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost sorry that we have games at the same time. It's like, but can we pause and watch this shit? Because <laughs> <laughs> right, no, right, right, no, right, right. Yeah. I we mean, that, I, I mean, obviously, somewhere. it's in the game of the week for. It's in the game of the week. It's in the game of the week for a reason. And then our game of the week time slide is a, is a pretty doggone good matchup as well, which we'll get to in a second. Knox, who do you like in the game between the U and a BIC? What's your prediction? Uh, I'm just like everybody else. I'm not putting a score on it. Um, if you have one. Nah, I'm not putting a score on it. Do I expect it to be uh, a great matchup and a great game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's not one of those games where it starts off, you know what I'm saying, like it's going to be a battle and then it just goes a whole different way. <laughs> I expect it, you know what I'm saying? I want it to really, like, I would want to see it just like the last game. I want to see it go down to the last fucking second. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see, like, I want to see some, I want to see some. I do. I'm excited for it, though. Oh, I didn't know we were trying to do score predictions. I got one. 34-28. You. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you had one too many drinks. Personally, <laughs> I, I'm, personally, I'm kind of hope personally, I'm I personally I'm kind of hoping that it goes into overtime. Just because why not? They they've gone to the last wire. Why not go to the fifth quarter? I would love to see this game go into overtime. I, I really, really would. Just, I just think from we a might fan our, perspective. I think we might even see our first get back with that game. Oh wow. Oh. 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 Well. It, it, mm. I think we might see. <laughs> they haven't got they they haven't been able to experience that out there. So I feel like once somebody's able to experience it, you'll start seeing more of it. But I feel like mm -hmm. you'll see it that game. Wow, that's a that's a they very need, they bold need to prediction. recruit a, one Knox twenty five to be the thrower so they can get that. <laughs> <laughs> look, Man. somebody. Hey, look, Derek. Somebody needs to pick me up because the way these throw offs have been looking. The three on one, I'm gonna keep saying it has went from being the most exciting and entertaining thing to watch, to you just be like, "Yep, yeah, whatever." Yeah. So there's one other thrower in our division that does it almost as good as you, and that's Swag Urkel. But he hasn't been doing it like that. Like he's his throw off game has kind of been a little lacking from what it was the first couple of seasons. So I don't know if he's trying he different that, strategies, though. but he he used to be that dude. But he, he did say that. that. He did say that. So I guess now who has become, I guess, the best neutralizer, as I used to call Knox 25, because that's what he did. He neutralized the 301 with his throw-offs. Who would you say has that capability or has, uh, I guess, taken over that mantle of being the neutralizer on the 3 on one I mean, for my money, the closest one right now is Cody Johnson. He's got the wheels to get down there. His his approach is different. Wow. He's got a good arm. 
He's got a good arm, and he gets down there to to help move the the returner to make him make a decision. Where Knox threw the ball so good, he kind of stood back, and he was the safety valve. Cody throws the ball and gets down there and puts pressure on it. (laughs) Nah, Cody gets down there and gets the ball first. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now he. Well, now he. That's my dog. Now Cody has, of course, now Cody has now added the uh, Batman mask to his repertoire now. Uh, joining um, Denzel Daniels like as the... Uh... He looks more like Bane than the Batman. Hey, his ripped though. Well, he ripped the guy? That was crazy. Well, now he's joined Mr. Daniels as the uh, mask phantoms of the Insomniac. Hey, I, I think I might have got left at the bar. Uh, let me tap back in once I figure out what my people said. I, I, I'll scale a little bit. All right, Derek. All right. <laughs> All right, Derek, thank you for chiming in. Of course, that is uh, Derek Duncan, the division owner, chiming in and giving his thoughts on the BIC and the U, which, of course, um, will be in one of the game of the week time slots that you can catch this upcoming Sunday on Caffeine, ASNFL.TV, CSN, HBCU+, and, of course, um, any out, and, of course, uh, globally across the globe on the zone. So there's a lot of uh, exciting matchups on the game of the week. And um, as we get into our portion of the schedule for this upcoming Sunday, to which um, for those that don't know, um, the games this will be taking place at Mather East Las Vegas Academy. So that is Mather East Academy, which is Mater. on East hey, Bonanza. Uh, Mather. Uh, yes. Mather. Mather. Yes. Not, you got to take out the H. Oh. Mather. Mater, yeah, 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 did, I, yeah. did I say it right? Okay, yeah, yeah. but uh, it is on <laughs> East Bonanza, <laughs> so uh, that's where the action will take place this upcoming Sunday. That's M A T E R yeah. for those that don't know how to spell <laughs> <laughs> on uh, East Bonanza. But uh, first game, <laughs> first game, of course, will be at 11 a.m. as um. As technology likes to be a pain sometimes, but uh, first game that's upcoming on the um at eleven. If I'm looking at this correctly, first game of the day. Yeah. Hold on, I think it is. Hold on, folks. First game of the day on the 14th of April will be the Gold and the Kryptonite, or as uh my colleague likes to say, the Crypt Kings. Crypt Kings. Um, that's the first. That's Kings the first and game of the day. Uh, the Kings and Knights. Kryptonite had a very nice showing against the Hunters back in week one. Um, they all do have some nice uh, black jerseys that they might be debuting this Sunday. We don't know. Um, but um, I like the way Powell ran the ball for um, the Kryptonite. And Primetime found the end zone twice. Um, I don't see any of that not stopping. Um, I do have the uh, Kryptonite. I do have the kryptonite winning big, so um, that that's what I have. Knox, what says you? Uh, I definitely have the 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 kryptonite kings and knights. <laughs> uh, I have them. I have them like like you said, putting up some pretty big numbers. Um, again, that's no offense to what the gold. Uh, is trying to do, but I think the uniforms are definitely going to look better than the score. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong, but I will say, um, Alexander Flisk, their quarterback for the uh, tonight, uh, yeah, threw some I like very, him. he, I he like threw him. some very nice passes. I yes, like he threw him. some very, he threw some very nice yeah. passes in a uh, week one. I mean, threw a dime to prime time, threw a dime, uh, in the um, second half, he he definitely has thrown some nice balls, and he's very accurate throwing on the run, rolling out to his right, which mm-hmm. was very, very, very impressive. Um, to which, that's what the good quarterbacks do. If you can roll out and throw and be accurate, and puts and he had some nice touch on a few passes too. So he definitely uh, was very um, intriguing to watch, and I'm definitely looking forward to um, watching him again this upcoming Sunday as they will kick off the. Um, well, yes, he did throw a pick six on the very first play, and uh, Mr. Hey. Wilson did take it back to the house, which was a beautifully red interception. And, um, I mean, facts are facts. He threw a pick, 
Mr. Wilson took it off and took it to the house yeah, for a house but call. Just, but 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 just like a person that understands what he did wrong, he made up for it. Okay, oh, yeah. he made uh, he made a few plays after that. I didn't know who he was. I was at home no. watching the game, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, okay, he's getting busy." Yeah, but I do have to apologize because in the first portion of the game, I was calling him Fisk, like he was a like he was Carlton Fisk, the uh, Major League Hall of Fame catcher. But um, it's Flisk, F L I S K. But nonetheless, um, he uh, made some nice throws after that pick six. Mm-hmm. And um, definitely looks to improve on that. All right, a lot of uh, stuff going on with this organization. We don't know what's going on, um, but in week two, it is the Insomniacs taking on the Pit Bosses. Um, like I said, we really don't know what to expect from the Pit Bosses. Like I said, there's been some uh, changes within the organization. Hopefully, for the better. Um, we will see how that will translate onto the field, but the champs are going to be the champs until you beat them. So, uh, obviously, I'm going to pick the champs because, like I said, like I always say, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And until somebody cracks the code, I'm going to pick the wolf pack. Yeah. That's an easy one. Not like that, but like you said, just given the fact of what's going on with the organization. And at this point, players just want to play. You know what I mean? Um uh, yeah, like you said, it's... and and sometimes, and sometimes that really is the best remedy because when there's a lot of a uh, controversy or unknown stuff with an organization, sometimes the best thing is just to get out there and play because, in a sense, that is your your place of peace because you can't control the outside stuff. The only thing you do is just try to control what you can do on the field and just get out there and play. And just, you know, do what you can do to the best of your ability, which is, you know, an unfortunate situation. But we now come to the game of the week. And as I said, this really should be a dandy or yeah. in the fa- in, or in the famous words of Jim Ross, this really should be a slobber knocker. The last two times these two teams have played, it has been fantastic down to the wire. Both games were decided by a total of nine points which just goes to show you how evenly matched these teams were. Um, of course, in the game of the week slot, it is sick with it against the force. Obviously, the sick with it coming off their win in week one, and then the force played the champs to the to the very end. And very rare do you see, do you say a team picked up some momentum after a loss, but I really feel like the force have picked up a lot of momentum Um playing the champs as well as they did before the champs eventually pulled away by 13. And just to go back to the history of these two teams, they met last season in the regular season and the final score was 21 to 14. They met again in the playoffs. The force were actually up 19 to six and sick came back to win by two 27 to 25. Um, Definitely. There's no love lost between these two teams. Um, You know, both teams are well coached. Both teams have very talented people on their teams big man how do you how, how do you see this matchup uh the third time going around between sick and the force uh, i see this game pretty much going down like what was it insomniac's force mm-hmm. i feel like the forces is, is definitely they're, they're trying to prove something right now you know yeah. what i'm saying even just to themselves they're trying to prove something they have the players to do so too, you know what I'm saying? To be able to make something possible, uh, just to even see themselves probably even moving up in the rankings. Um, that's doing something that's motivation. Yeah. They know what they're Cause, playing for. Cause very rarely do you see a team move up in a countdown and they're coming off an L, but I mean, yeah. that's just how impressive they was in that game to where they, they got, they garnered some spots in, in a sense, um, gaining some respect in the polls for for lack of a better term yeah but you it, it with that that's an organization that's been around right yes we can yes. we can say it started with them so Correct. they already have the experience right they've already been to the next level they've already traveled they've already done all the things that they're you know what i'm saying other teams that are trying to do the same shit. Correct. um 
So it's one of those where they don't necessarily really have anything to prove. Mm -hmm. All they really have to do is just continue to show that they've always been on that level. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I know some of the players over there, right? And even before the season had kicked off, we were saying we didn't necessarily know who was on whose roster. You know what I'm saying? So we really couldn't say anything. But seeing who they have on their roster now, you you see that they're they they're capable of what they've been, I guess, talking. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So but it's also like I said though, I would wanna see uh what's his name? Fox? Yeah, Dion Fox. I would want to see Fox finish the game. Correct. If he would have been able to finish the game, we even all said if he would have been able to finish the game against uh, Samiax, that game probably would have went differently. It possibly could have. You're not wrong. So I feel like that's going to be – he's always been the deciding factor in their wins or losses. Correct. I'm not saying that it's necessarily on him. But it's because of the talent that he brings to the team. You know what I'm saying? But I've also said I would want to see him be more vocal and really take control and really demand the field. And, you know what I'm saying, show and make his presence really felt by utilizing both not only his feet, but utilizing that arm that we've seen that he had once he put that in the back of the end zone. Yes. I was like, oh, and that was on the the run. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? the touch, so the, tu- the yeah. touchdown to lock, the touchdown to lock, and and the throw was one of the best throws I've certainly seen in my time in the league. Because I mean, there's not many quarterbacks that can make that throw, and Deion right. Fox is, and Deion Fox is definitely one of those guys that can make that throw, and he did it with such ease, and it got there with such ease. Like some people try to struggle to try to throw the ball to the back pylon, and he just did it with ease, and Lockett did the great job of not only making the catch, but securing his feet yeah. and making his feet stay in bounds before he went out of bounds, which is but even quite giving impressive. Him target. Yeah, giving, yeah. giving him giving him that, that go-ahead to like, hey, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said, that's, that's, that's something that's big. You want to trust the person that you're playing alongside, and I feel like that's what they've been building. Uh, within the off season and even in the fall brawls, just trying to build that trust within themselves and knowing like, hey, the talk has always been these two teams. But if you really think about it, who else could they really talk about and can we really take them out? Very, very valid points in this game. Um, obviously, as you know, the game is won in the trenches and both teams do have some big boys up front. How do you see the battle at the line of scrimmage with these two teams? I think it's going to be a fun one. You got Reds. You got Sal. That's always fun, right? Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. That's always fun. That's always a good one. Um, but now you got the addition of Diggs and Lugo. Yes. Um, yes. You 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 have Branch over there. That's that he yes. can be a threat at blocking as well as uh, mm-hmm. even being that release and tight end. Um, Along with Walters. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, though, it's going to come down to the D lines. The D lines are what's going to play a factor in this game. If JG has time to do what he wants to do, he's going to do it. If Fox has time to do what he wants to do, he's going to do it. But if the O-line for either side can't hold up and the D-line is having a field day, that's also going to be a problem. Now, would you say the D-line on either side might be your X factor if you were uh, putting your analysis on it? I'm going to keep it real. If I'm not mistaken, and I can't call by name, so I'm not going to do that, but I know for sure the force has maybe three D linemen. Mm -hmm. One that has a motor, Mm -hmm. but he can't do it by himself. I feel like Sick has depth to where 
if one's not doing it, they'll hopefully they'll they'll figure it out and put who they need to in. If the force can, like I said, you have multiple players who can play multiple positions, but they just probably choose not to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But could be effective on the line. Um, but ultimately, like I said, with the guys, and I know him personally on both sides, I just feel when it comes down to this game, experience, um, mindset, depth, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go with six. I feel like six D line will will definitely have more. They'll have more. I'm gonna say more fun. Hmm. That's a very interesting analogy. Very interesting yeah, analogy. Man. I like um, to have fun. <laughs> I, I I noticed that. Um, I played D line. That's what a lot of people don't know, though, Dub. I played D line before anything. Ooh, that's a very good analogy, Mr. Luciano. As he uh, chimed in saying that he thinks it's going to come down to the championship points, as uh, Matt Ryan always talks about. And he definitely agrees that it's going to be a close game. He's got sick by three, 35 mm. to 32, which, again, yeah, I feel like the it'll two be a games, close as mentioned, the two games that they played, like I said, First game in the regular season, final score was sick, 21, force 14. And then in game two in the playoffs, which was a 27-25 final score, which obviously it came down to championship points, and sick was better by two points. Um, this is probably another game, in addition to the UMBSC, that I would love to see go to overtime. Just for just speaking as a fan, the, the, the fandom in me would love to see this go to the fifth quarter because, as said, both games have come down to the wire, uh, both closely played games. Why would it not go into overtime? But, um, hey, but, Dub, let me ask you this, though. If it did go into overtime, how would you want to see it end? Oof. <laughs> hmm. It would have to end on a on some kind of a walk off, be it a walk off pick six, a walk off return, a walk off touchdown, uh, something in that fashion. If it did go into the fourth quarter, because I don't think we've had certain. I will. I don't think in Nevada we've had an overtime game, and obviously, um, no. How are we hating if we said it's going to be a close game, Reggie? <laughs> And and just just for that, just just for that, because <laughs> hold on, Bucko. Clearly you ain't been watching, okay? Not once did we say y'all was gonna get blown out. Not once did we say you personally was gonna get worked by Sal. Uh not once did we say anything of that nature, okay? We kept it cordial and said, bro, this we think because of your guys' last performance, it would be a great game, and it's going to come down to the wire. But I feel personally you're going to take something personal. You're going to cost your team the game. You're going to have a blown a block. You're not going to block somebody. You're going to hold somebody. Um, you're going to do something. And that's one because I love you. <laughs> Haters. Nobody want to hate on you. But just for that, and I'm posting. I, every every play that you do something bad, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm in the booth that whole game. I'm in the booth that whole game. Know that. I'm, every time oh, you do something, man. I'm going to talk about it. Blown assignment. Blown off. Oh, Reginald Black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on you. Nah, I hope. Hey, look, I want to see a great game. Nobody said. I mean, I ain't gonna say we didn't say. Yeah, you might. You lost the last one. Y'all was supposed to win that one. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You said you guys was gonna win and beat the Insomniacs. You said, hey, coming in. Oh, we got this. This is game of the week. This is us. Okay, what happened? Y'all was supposed to win. What happened? I will say this. Will it be surprising 
Okay, well, Knox, you have a question for Mr. Franklin, and I'll let you answer that. Oh, because it was daylight outside, so you see I had my blinds down, and then I had, like, a little background and some other stuff. But, like, trust me, I've been waiting for the right moment to, like, camera down so I could flip up two light switches real quick, and then it wouldn't be like this. But we've been on the road. <laughs> now, certainly from my end, will it be – will? Will I consider it an up? Will I consider it an upset if the force beat stick with it? No, I will not because, as I said, around the league, the force have been getting respect because, again, you don't move up. You don't move up slots in the countdown. Coming off of a loss, and that loss was happened to be against the defending champions, and for a very good portion of that game, the score was tied. It was tied at the half. And the Force had a seven-point lead, but the Insomniacs found a way to pull off by 13. So it is not far-fetched to say that the Force can absolutely win this game because there is talent. And as you can see, Knox appears magically with some light. And let there yeah. be light, said. Let there be light, said Knox 25 I got live. you. No trip, frankly. All you had to do was say you wanted to really see my face. You feel me? I got you. <laughs> Indeed, and the Lord said, "Let there be light." Hey, good. Amen. The doors of the church is open. Is there one? But anyhow, no. I will not consider it a huge upset if the force pull it out, and if the force do it, I'll be the first to tip my cap and give them their flowers because again, they are a very talented team. And you, like I said, both teams, well coach, both teams got a lot of depth. It's just going to come down to. Here we go. All right. I think you have a response. Here we go. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear that. That's too much. I'm not your girlfriend. That's too much. It should have been like one or two two words. Like, you should have said like, say less or like, bet. You feel me? Or like, I, right. you know what I'm saying? That's too much. I'm not reading that. Long story short, Lord. I'm going to say this. Um, let's just even say from a fan's point of view, right? Someone who's been involved or somebody who's been watching straightforward and it, like i said and this is why people have been rocking I, i'm not biased man i keep it gangster or just keep it real realistically people would like to have seen you guys beat the insomniacs and people would like and love if you guys probably beat sick realistically again give us something to talk about we're not taking the credit from you guys because we see the work that you're putting in so we want to see you guys win. We want to see that. But just like I mentioned, when you have players like Fox that go down and other players that go down, that had a big factor in your guys' loss against Insomniacs. So again, listening to what we're saying, we would want to see all of these players finish the games. So it can be a good game. <clears throat> Okay, now, obviously, there were some questionable calls in that game, as there is in every game. If and we're talking about that stupid kickball thing, like, I don't, man, it's a rule. It's probably the same rule within the NFL, so that's... I, I, don't, I, don't, know, I don't know if he's talking about that, um, but, I mean, you know... You can say that for both sides, though, so... You can, you, know? you can, you're not wrong, you're not, you're not wrong. You can say that for both sides, but... I'm going to keep it real. Only losers say the refs cost us the game. That's what losers say. You're not wrong on that either. And, and that's even with myself. Even with me, all the the, the refs. I said that with, with uh, Kryptonite versus Pit Bosses. When Bartley was on the field for damn near half the game. Not one ref told him to get off the sideline. Not one ref told him to get off the field. Not one ref did anything. And I said, here, I said the same thing. And what was I? A loser. Sure loser. Because we still could have beat that. Excuse me. We still could have beat them, even with him being on the field. Well, there was a quote that A. DeBartolo said. <laughs> <laughs> Real. <laughs> hey, Frank. I got you. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, man. Like, come on, man. Let's be realistic. You feel me? Knox is campaigning for Congress in the state of Nevada. Here we go. 
we go. Let's be realistic. I think oh, I'd baby. Be better than, I think I'd be better than that one guy we had on here. I'm going to keep it real. He was real. Uh -oh. He was straight edge. Uh oh. Oh, boy. And basically, uh, Zach is saying, uh, "Say it again for the people in the back, so they can hear you. So they can hear you one saying, time." Any any team, any person, any individual. If you blame your loss on the ref, you're a loser. Okay, losers. Um, a A seven fell. Um, who is the fat one? <laughs> for the. The top of the hour, we end at the top of the hour, but we might go a little bit extra since we did come on a little bit late as uh, I was waiting for Knox25 to come on and uh, prepare himself. Um, that's what happened, but nonetheless, um, double A and uh, Knox25 here. No, we're not a cat. Again, you didn't answer my question. Who is the fat one? Who are you? Who are you speaking of? Like we will, we will go again. Technically speaking, we are not on a time limit. We got to use now, the app button. We're not in the studio neither, so we can technically use however much time we would like. Yes. And I'm pretty free, so what's the deal? <laughs> the one who would have, have access to this channel. Okay. Um, access to this channel. Please give yourself a name, and we will send you the link if you want to come on at the top of the hour. Or you can do it. <clears throat> oh, or you can... okay. I think they know. I... <laughs> Never I mind. I got, I got it. I got it. I was going to say, I think I got it. Let me see if <laughs> I, I got it. I got Let it. Me... All I... right. I just want to know All if right. I got it. <laughs> no, no, no I, I think you and I know who we're talking about. Okay. Other than that, mm. what else we got? What else we got? Mm. Uh, if we got that, let's Are get we... to this. Are are we talking Baby Yoda? Hmm? Use the Force, that what? Hmm? Hmm? Are we talking Baby Yoda? Use the Force? Yes. All right. The access to the channel, please stand by, and uh, uh we will get you on the air. <laughs> oh boy. I was gonna say Jake, Jake and the Fat Man, but that's an old school show that a lot of people don't know about. But I'll just uh. Leave that there for the time being, but uh, nonetheless, um, so if you if I did hear you correctly, you did say you're going with sick big man. Is that what you said? Is that a fair assessment? Did I did I hear that correctly? Say it again. I said, <clears throat> do you have a prediction for this game in the game of the week time slot between the force? And sick. Yeah, I mean, I you think don't, you, don't, go you don't have to I give me a score. You just say who you think is going to win. No, the game. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do a score. I feel like it's, it's going to be just like last week's game, where it's going to be a great game. I'm, I'm hoping for a great game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. I don't feel like it's one of those where I would, me personally, want to put a score. Now, not to toot my own horn, but hey, if I was involved in this, then I would definitely put a score on it. But because I'm not involved, <laughs> there are many different factors that could, you know, be a factor. So, yeah, there's no score, but I feel like at the end of the at the end of the game, I feel like Sick will definitely end up taking it. All right. To answer your question, Mr. Franklin, if you want to come on the show and give your two cents, um, we would send you the link, and then you would click on that link, and then you would be added to the studio. And then once you're added to the stage, you are now on the show. But with that said, um, for those that want to be guests on future shows, still reach out to Nick Blaze. He is still the producer of the show. Yeah, man, get with Blaze. Even though we are not in a studio per se for the time being, but still, he is still the producer of this show. So if you, again, for future guests, if you want to come on the other side of the ball and talk with the panel, even though for tonight is just two of us, myself and Knox, but if you want to come on the show, please reach out to Nick Blaze, and Nick Blaze will set you up because there is a other side of the ball website at theothersideoftheball.com to where you can fill out a questionnaire, 
this, that, and the fourth, and then Blaze will set you up for one of the shows that you will come on and talk some football with us. But I hope but, that hey. clarifies. But I hope no, that clarified did. and answered your question, Mr. Franklin. I was just going to double back uh, double back, and like one of my good friends say, shout out to Jay. You feel me? I'm going to piggyback off of what you just said. Um, we encourage it. Um, like I said, with someone who's starting to get a look into the behind the scenes and, you know, the stuff that really goes on, we encourage it. If you want to be on, please reach out to whoever you need to reach out to and make sure, you know what I'm saying? You, you put it out there. If you plant the seed, it'll definitely grow. We want everybody to be a part. There's nobody that's not being told that they can't come on. No. Like I, I'm pretty sure there are some players out there from across the league that wants to come on and perhaps promote their division or promote their team or perhaps, you know, What's Talk the about their football story and how they got here. What's the prediction? Joe, are you playing linebacker? What, what, where are you playing? As some questions are being asked. Well, well, if I have to give my prediction, um, again, I'm going, and again, this is not being biased. It's just, again, until they crack the code and beat them, which they've been close on two different occasions, until they crack the code, I'm kind of like Zach. It's going to be a – I'm going to say it's going to be a seven-point game or less, but I'm still going to take sick until some until the force can crack the code and beat them, which, again, if they win, it will not be a shock. I won't be surprised, and I'll be the first to tip my cap. But, again, it's until you crack the code. Again, I hate, I hate piggybacking on the uh, Ric Flair quote, but again, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And well, I mean, in this case, they not the men, so you got to beat, you got to beat like the cousins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll use a wrestling analogy. Um, until Cody beat Roman Reigns, until he finally did WrestleMania, he's just gonna be on the outside looking in. So until. As you know, playing sports and me playing sports, playing baseball, there, there's always that one team that is preventing you from taking that next step. And until you beat them and get over the hump, the other team is going to live rent-free in your head until you beat them. Now, I, that's not me saying that they're living rent-free in their head, but they know they've been close the last two occasions. And some might say that the Force should have won that playoff game against Sick, being up 19-6. to six. And I'm sure they will use that as motivation to try and get over the hump, knock down that rung, and climb. Because, again, we know Sick. We know Force. They also have championship aspirations, in addition to wanting the Insomniacs wanting to repeat. But I still think it's going to be a dandy of a game. And like I said, as a fan... I would love to see this game going overtime. I really would. Just like yeah. I would love to see, just like I would love to see the U and BIC going to overtime. All right. Last game of the evening, which as usual, well, we might as well just call it Sunday night OTT because OTT always seems to be playing under the lights. <laughs> so we'll 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 just call that the over the top hour, but it is over the top against the uh, hunters in the nightcap at 7 p.m. Um, of course, OTT coming off an impressive win uh, against the gold of the hunters. Again, um, still still putting it together. Um, there were some plays that could have been had by the hunters against the Insomniacs. It's just. I think Kamari needs more time to throw in the pocket <clears throat> um, because, like I said, there were some plays there. Um, again, the question with over the top, um, as Chris has said so many times, um, who's QB number one? Because there's a lot of options that they have at quarterback, but it seems like they haven't settled on one yet. Um, when you're in a situation like that, Knox, like what – what 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 does that do to a team when you have a situation where you have three guys that are capable, but you're not settled on who who could be or should be the guy? Like what does what does that do to a team? Um, it can do a lot. I mean, and it 
yeah, we in certain people's cases it can be beneficial, right? But in a team like this who's still trying to figure it out um, and just still gain an identity for real, um, it's, it's difficult because in some of the players that you, you have in the backfield um, playing quarterback would be an asset elsewhere. So it's, it's, it's where you have to, you have to trust. I keep saying that you have to trust who's, who's back there. Uh, Kamari's definitely been, he's trying, he's trying. I give him that. And, and, and I give him a huge shout out for that's someone who's, I didn't know who I guess would say who's hearing me from afar where he po- took the time today to post and say, um, everybody posts their highlights and nobody posts their mess ups. He posted his mess ups. I feel like he wants to be back there, but like you said, he needs the time and I feel like he needs an equal game to just be able to gain that real confidence. He's showing he has the heart. Oh, and absolutely. we know he has the heart. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We we know absolutely. he has the heart. He hey, every play he got back up. You know what I'm saying? And no, no, mm-hmm. no complaining. No, no, nothing. He got back up. He really showed that he he can he can he can lead. You know what I mean? Or he mm-hmm. at least wants to lead, right? Um, and that he's at least dedicated to his organization. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But the yes. organization themselves has to put him in a better situation before they end up losing him. All right. On the flip side, for over the top, for OTT, from your perspective, who do you think should be QB number one? Who do you think should get the most reps? Or who do you, th- or who do you think the offense flows better with whomever is at quarterback from, from, what, you, from what you have seen and dissected? Again, they have multiple quarterbacks. Um, except in their case, they're they're able to be successful with the multiple quarterbacks quarterbacks that they do have. Um, but with this game, honestly, I would want to see Yodi. I want to see Yodi. I want to see Yodi start the game. Mm-hmm. I want to see him. Lee, like I said, Lee, take control. I want to see him be himself. I want to see Yodi be Yodi. I want to see them incorporate, let's just say, the back stack. I would like to see even <clears> Smooth get out there. You know what I'm saying? I would like to see, I'm not too sure the, who the other quarterback may be, but I know they got Smooth and, and Yodi for sure. I would like to see Smooth out, get out there and, you know, say, get back to his his normal self um, and just having fun with the game and, and having fun with the players that he's playing alongside. Um, and I feel like this could be a game where I'll say with this one, I'll give you a prediction with this one. Okay. Has OTT had a, had a mercy rule? Their first game against the goal back in week one. It was a 42 nothing shut. You give him another. Okay. I give him another. All right. But it's not going to be that easy. Okay. All right. And now, folks, joining us to the stage where I guess he's trying to keep warm and he's got the uh, Undertaker uh, locks going, which is a very nice look. Of course, the voice of the Ace NFL, and as I like to call him, the Jim Ross of A7, the one, the only, Mr. Matt Ryan. How are you, bud? Welcome. I'm doing uh, I'm I'm all right. Uh, how, how are you gentlemen doing? Knox, Mazel Tov, many happy returns on your uh, oh, most recent assignment. But uh, yeah, her, heard y'all talking the A7FL football and about the uh, the East Coast. So thought I thought I'd chime in and and get a temperature check on what's going on and bring a little energy. It, well, it, it's, uh, it, it sounds like a maudlin family reunion. It, the energy tonight <laughs> feels like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Cleveland insurance convention. Like all y'all trying to sell brake pads, the motherfuckers. Like, what are we doing here? We're talking A7 NFL football. Y'all, y'all just about. skated like Oksana Bayul past a metric ton of fuck shit. And here we are, just like talk, talking like you're calling in the C-SPAN. 
Jesus. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> hey, energy. That's why I've I'm drunk out hey. as fuck dealing with 95,000 fires, but you can hear me, Corey, Rob from the mother, Rob from the motherfucking emergency room. And by the way, by, by the way, the uh, week. by the way, prayers to Big Rob. Uh, get better, big fella, because we won't see you back in the booth. Um, he's all right. He's just, he's just there because he's been carrying me and Corey's asses for way too fucking long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we read the comments. We're not stupid. Um, but yeah, but, no, but this no, Sunday is um, the biggest, the yeah. biggest game of the year is on the schedule, in my yeah. opinion. Yes, yes, I love yes, it. yes. Yes, we talked about how the last two meetings were down to the wire. Um, just fantastic ball. How do you see this edition of UBIC this upcoming Sunday on the game of the week? Well, you've got two teams that are doing a lot of the same things very differently because you look at what – Huff is doing so far on the season, according to David Soberman and Cole Gardella, our stats team, Huff is 26 for 35 with a 74.3 completion percentage. That is bonkers in this league. <laughs> you see a number seven in f the first number in this league. That is confusing. Uh, but Sterry Codrington, 23 for 29. He's missed six passes. Six. Only one of them was an interception. That's insane. He's thrown for six touchdowns. Pardon me, ten touchdowns. Week two against the Renegades, he threw for six of them. Uh, but both of these teams are nearly impossible to beat. Um, when you look at the fact that since Ashante and Sterry linked up in 2021, the only team to beat them is the Patterson U. That's the only team to ever beat the BIC with the Shanti and Sterry on the field. And if I am the Baltimore Watchmen, if I am the Tampa Nightcrawlers, and especially if I am the Insomniacs, I am watching this game. I am stopping whatever the fuck I am doing. I am taking a notepad because both of these teams got better. This whole division, for the most part, um, if you want to hear about what teams we don't like, you can listen to the three on one podcast, wherever podcasts are sold, but you have to watch this game. Like, I, I don't know what game is going on in Vegas, but it's, it's the biggest game on the schedule until the championship, in my opinion, because the stakes to this game the only game I can say is close is the heist and the chaos. And I know there's some people uh, <laughs> out there on social media that are pushing this game to be important. And it is. I would say it's one of the most important games on the schedule on the league calendar. But the Orb Bowl is probably... And then we made it a bowl game for a reason. Sure, it was hasty. And I bought something on Amazon that now I have to turn into an orb. But that's my problem. Uh, <laughs> this game deserves an honorarium. And Ray Rich, no, no, other divisions do matter. But when nah, you look at the matchups, nah, nah, when you look that. at the matchups this season, you got to keep it real. That game is definitely a better game to watch than any game that is probably going to be on. And, and that's even history. from an entertaining aspect. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sick OTT is a really interesting game. But the history there is, last season, Sick showed up and sent the OTT packing with an epic, iconic, historic ass whooping. No, Actually, this week, it's, it's Sick and Force this week. Sick oh, so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of what week two was. But Sick and Force is a yes. great game. That actually is probably one of the best games on the schedule and I think the Force have a real outside shot of winning that game. You're that not wrong. Game, to me, you're not wrong. Has both of those teams in position to make a run in the playoffs? Because when you look at what the playoffs are starting to look like and what this division is mounting to be, the Sickwood and the Force are chasing the same thing that the BIC, the U, and the Watchmen are. One of us are going to be first. 
Just pray to God one of us is second. Because if you're third, you might be on the outside looking in. Like if you are the animals, if you're the renegades, if you're the snow tribe, you have an outside shot. Baltimore Watchmen, they have a path to the playoffs. But when you look at well, Jordan Davidson saying the force are winning out, that is a easy prediction in my opinion. Uh, outside of this game with sick, I think the force winning out is a fairly easy decision. And yeah, it's still the second best game. I don't think it's that easy only because Fox has not been able to ever finish a game. And because he's haven't been able to finish a game, we don't know what it could be like. We've seen him get busy, right? We've seen him, but the second he went down, we've seen spurts. They, we've yeah, seen spurts. the second he went down, and and they had to let's just say make the the, the substitution. It wasn't nothing to watch after that. So if if they don't have the factors that they need, it might not be as easy as what everyone may want it to be. Well, well, Knox, if you played win, loss, do- win, dog, lost, dog right now mm-hmm. with the remaining schedule for the force, and I'll pull it up here and we can turn it into a fun game like we do on the three on one podcast. Uh, so Which, by the way, real quickly, while Matt's looking it up on the Northeast, um, first game, one Eastern, 10 Pacific, it's the buzz and the snow trap kicking it off. And then, of course, in the, uh, Can we talk PM. about that game really quickly? Go ahead. Go ahead. I've got the buzz by a touchdown. Really? I've got I've got the buzz. You know, I would say maybe three points. I those two teams last year when they played each other played a really tight, really close game. It was one of the funner games of last season towards the end of the year. The buzz gave the Watchmen a problem. They the score does not really tell the story of the game because for all accounts because much like the early world series of the 20th century, this can only be told third hand, second hand or through Facebook live footage. <laughs> <laughs> it was up until the fourth quarter where the levy really broke and the watchman got the win. They won by, you know, three scores. That's impressive. But when you look at the buzz and the and you look at the snow tribe, the snow tribe are still trying to figure shit out after a whole off season where they were supposed to make a statement. This was supposed to be the year, and we belabor this point on our show all the time. But the buzz actually went out there and tried some things. They tried to make some pickups. They tried to make some moves. You know, sadly, the call of the the U, like Snacks, the the swamp didn't end up happening. So a lot of those guys didn't go to the buzz. They stayed with the U or they stayed with the Watchmen. They stayed with what was familiar and not trying to build something new when we're all in the middle of an arms race. This whole league is in the middle of an arms race. And right now it's a little, little static, like things are calmed down. But during the offseason... Shit you were hearing was fucking wild. And you really couldn't figure out one way or another what was going to happen. Um, A lot of those didn't pan out. A lot of those did. But we, going back to this win dog, lost dog, you know, the sick have force this week. But next week they have OTT. I think the OTT lose to force. I don't know if there's enough. I, I don't know enough about the OTT this season. I keep hearing about how they've gotten better and they are one and oh, but is that a true one and oh? That's a very good question. I mean, there's for the first time since they've been in as an organization, they definitely have shown a lot. Well, this particular team has a lot of depth. There's a lot of depth on OTT and it probably won't get tested until they play the force because this week they have the hunters in the 7 p.m. time slot. So, I mean, there's talented people on there, as we know, but I think their first true test is when they come up against somebody against force, against sick, and obviously the insomniac. So I guess you could say it's a to be determined. But of course, as you know, watching any OTT game, they're always going to give you everything they got. They're always going to show heart. They're always going to sh- and they're always going to play 
to the final gun. It's almost like, you know, death and taxes. But then yep. they have the kryptonite, the pit bosses, and the and then they round everything out against the hunters. Uh -huh. To me, it feels like the force with how that team's constructed and how impressive they looked against the Insomniacs and whether or not that was them stepping up or the Insomniacs stepping down is arguable on all sides of the ball. And, you know, this is the other side of the ball. So I'm starting to sound like Corey. Fuck, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when you look at the way the force played in week one, that gives you a real inkling that they're for real. Mm -hmm. Like when we saw the Silk City animals against the U this week, everybody thought they were going to get fucking wave raced off the field. But Bebo Rios and David Tender, these guys would get fucking shellacked and keep coming and finding ways to score, making well, it not, a two-score game. That was the most at, points at one point I think in time. animals have scored in this league, let alone against the Patterson U, who scored six scored sixty points. Yeah, they scored sixty six. The animals scored forty five, and at one point in time, to where before we got canceled, we was uh, giving the viewers a score of the game, and at that point, the animals got within eleven. And then, of course, the U put on the uh, stepped on the gas, and you know, put up a sixty burger. But um, what's the one matchup that you're looking forward to seeing going back now to the UMBIC in the game of the week slot? Oh, in, uh, it's the, the offensive four... line versus the defensive line okay. uh, on both sides. Oh, on both sides, okay. Because when you look at these defenses, and we break this down a little bit more on the podcast with KWAC Carnell Wacker, who's on the offensive and defensive line of the BIC, Isaac Negron, after having a down year last year on the Schnow Tribe, comes back to the U and has five sacks in two weeks. Kevin White, who took a long layoff from the league, three sacks. And then they have five guys, including Mo Ramadan, who was fasting up until today because he was observing Ramadan. Oh, like, no. shout out to all the guys in the league who are observing Ramadan at this point of the year and playing A7 ball. That's that's crazy. fucking tough. Yeah, that's crazy. But God. he's joined by J Rock Rogers and his hair, Dion Davis, Nick Mays, who's a huge asset, jumping over from the Watchmen, and Marcus McKinney with all of one sack. And then you have the BIC, who have John Columbia with three sacks. He's a fucking loose cannon on the field. Like he is a wackadoo. And you, he's the Sean Avery if you're a hockey fan. Of the BIC, he's the he's the instigator. He's the one that's going to keep poking at you, and he's going to be the one that that tries to get you to make that mistake to cost you the game. Uh, and then you have Rashad Knight and the ice cream truck with two sacks apiece, and the ice cream truck is running people over on the other side of the ball, rushing it. And then you have someone you guys know pretty well, Trey Robinson with the sack. Carnell Wachter and Ole Bell, two East Coast OGs with one sack apiece as well. So it's going to be how these offensive lines really are able to withstand the heat of either side of the ball. Because there were points where Starry Codrington was getting three seconds in the pocket. And I think that that, with all the weapons he has available to him, is insane. And then you throw in the U having Jason Sisson, who's having an MVP caliber season as a part of that back stack and being the fastest human I've ever seen in person. He's ridiculous. <clears throat> like you have these different matchups and you have these different combinations to where it feels like they're variants of each other. They're opposite world versions of each team. Because they have people who play really important roles in important positions, but play them so differently. Huff is a natural-born quarterback, but he plays like an improviser. He plays like Miles Davis, this jazz musician who can find these spots and do these different things at any given point and make throws that make no goddamn sense. <laughs> I've seen chess passes. Me, Rob, and Corey will look at each other like a dog that was shown a card trick because we don't know how the fuck the ball got there. And then Sterry is a guy who played corner. He's a guy who made his bones internationally in the secondary, who went from a guy 
who, as soon as he saw daylight, he was going down the fucking field. And in his first two seasons, took the BIC to the chip. To now, to one of the most accurate passers in the league. He's run twice this season. He's run the ball twice this season on games of the week. And both of those times, he scored. He scored a touchdown both times he decided to run. Two carries, 119 yards, averaging just under 60 yards a carry. Yikes. Yikes. That's, wow. So, from from this perspective from you of you being a broadcaster, when you know this matchup is coming um, as a broadcaster, how hyped do you get knowing that you're going to call a Danny of a football game or you hope to call a Danny of a football game, especially when it's UBS. Like, like, how does that get your broadcasting juices flowing, for lack of a better term? Oh, I'm already ready. I'm, I've been ready. I've been ready since that game ended on Sunday. Like, this is, this is, the, this is, this is the easiest game of the year. This is by far the – this in the championship will be the easiest game of the year for me. Really? Why so? In, in line, in line, our views as to why you say that. Because the job, the job's already there for me. I don't need mm-hmm. to bullshit. I don't need to. I don't need to overdo it. I don't need to be me times ten, me times twenty. I don't need to dig deep and feel at the end of the game like I'm fucking cooked. I'm gonna mm-hmm. feel that way anyway because all of that's gonna happen naturally. Like, this isn't going to be artifice. This isn't a performance. This isn't anything other than me watching two of the best teams in football, in my opinion. Fuck A7 in football. Play each other. And I get the honor and distinction to be the person describing what's going on. I get to be the translator for this. And I take that very seriously. And I... Don't need to over prepare. I know these players. I know this league. I know every centimeter of that broadcast space. So Sunday's another day at the office. So 15 minutes before the start of the broadcast, I'm going to invariably have a panic attack because I have one every week. Uh, get myself focused and just hope that I don't suck. That's all. You, that's all you can hope for. Anytime yeah, you sit in front of a microphone, all you're hoping for is you don't suck, and you suck. You know, you have the tendency to suck a lot in this business. You know, no ditty, but um, <laughs> when it comes to hence, hence why I call him the Jim Ross of A7. <laughs> you you have to take an understanding of what you're doing. And realize, like this is this is a it's a job, but it's also anytime you're tasked with being the voice of something, it's very important. Like you got to take that seriously, and you have to respect <laughs> the fact. Will Franklin is cracking jokes tonight, folks. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even really wash my hair today. I did take a shower earlier, but I didn't even put in like the fancy shampoo and conditioner I use. My, none of my eye creams and none of that. I'm just myself. Ugh. I am pretty. I'm, I'm man pretty. But yeah, back to football. Um, that was just soda. But once also. again, once once again, Matt Ryan joining us, giving uh, his take on the UNBIC this upcoming Sunday, which you can catch 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific time on the game of the week. And also, the you story. can buy a shirt commemorating that. The first ever orb bowl. There, This is the regular orb. This is the orb that will never be given out. This is the shoot orb. Uh, we have the new orb that is over there off camera that still needs to be painted. Is it a volleyball? Probably. Do you care? No. Do you care about the fact that it's an orb and it's being defended and we are doing a midseason ball game because fuck you. Um, now, my next question for that is, eventually, will there be a trophy made out of this for the UNBIC? 
Oh, the the orb is the bowl. Like it's a bowl trophy. <laughs> like the winner of this oh, will be getting their own orb with the score written on it. The whole shebang a bang. Got like, it. Like this is, it's it's cockamamie, but we take it seriously because <laughs> it's oh, oh baby. To me, to me, traditions are what you make of them. True. And if you start something silly but people take it seriously, it's because there's there's a seriousness behind it. Like, mm -hmm. the award may be fucking goofy, but this is to be given to somebody who's earned to be given something so absurd because their performance is absurd. My favorite artist is a guy named Marcel Duchamp. And he's a guy, the one art piece of artwork that is stuck in my brain for half of my life because I learned this when I was 16. Um, it was a gallery. And he put a toilet there. Just signed his name on the fucking shitter, put it there, and it was art. Interesting. Art is what you make of it. This life that is, is what you make of it. That is and facts. to me, that's kind of what this league is. This league is what you make of it. This league is either a place for you to show up, play with your buddies, go and get you know fucked up at a bar after, or to watch your other buddies play. It's an opportunity for you to get film and show scouts that you can still do it. Or it's your opportunity to prove that you belong and to build something and to make something special and important and create something on top of it. Yes, Ray Rich, a shitter, a toilet. And I'm being profound. It goes back to somebody signing a toilet in France in the late 18th, early 20th century. So, you know, deal with it. It's, we're here now. But when we <laughs> take everything that this league is for good for bad it's a community and we have to find ways to celebrate that community and celebrate the games that matter to us the games that are a celebration of this league a celebration of some of our best athletes our best rivalries and are honestly some of our most chaotic moments because whenever these two teams play each other Holy shit, something happens. Every time these guys play each other, it ends up with some sort of controversial call that makes all of us wonder, okay, um, if they come into the production room, how do we <laughs> calm this the fuck down? Well, before you came on, Knox and I were talking about how the last two meetings between these two were literally down to the very last second. And, of course, the playoff game to where the referees are scrambling and we don't know if it's a touchdown or not. And, then of course, you let the whole world know that it was. So, I mean, are you expecting that same kind of feeling this upcoming Sunday between these two? Because, I mean, I mean pre I'm predicting it's going to be a close score, as it always is, between these two. Um, just do you think it will come don't, down I don't to the final seconds again? I... I okay. This game is going to go down to the last drive no matter what we do. No matter okay. no matter what anything does, it's always going to be close. The only way this game gets out of hand is either, as Knox said earlier, the get back happens. Or somehow, some way, the three-on-one returns are just concussive because both teams have guys that can score at will on the return. But then you've got Huff who can throw the ball 80 yards on a line for the BI for the U. And you have a lot of guys on the BIC who are so adept at, at turnover stoppage and being able to, I'm sorry, three on one stoppage and being able to isolate a returner. So it, it's really hard to say, but History is doomed to repeat itself, and I think that we're going to see that this Sunday. So no prediction, but he says it's going to be chaos as it normally is between the U and BIC, which, again, you can catch that in the 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific time slot on 
the game of the week. And, of course, the other game going on at the same time that the buzz and the show trap is going on is the Renegades against the Watchmen. Um, what's your take on that game, Matt? Um, I think that the Watchmen are looking to keep the momentum going. They're trying to bounce back after a really tough week one. And the Renegades are disjointed. Um, I think that they have a lot of things to answer for on defense. I think that their running game is pretty solid, but they have players on offense who need to step up. Corey Hammond was getting like under 1.5 seconds in the pocket <laughs> on average. So when it comes to the offensive line, that thing chases, that thing haunts Corey like a bad ex-girlfriend team to team, no matter what. That man has no time in the pocket. It is it is like a toilet at Port Authority. Everybody's just trying to shit on my man, and I get it. <laughs> it's it's rough. Um, there there are some great athletes on that team. I think Xavier <laughs> Finney needs to step up and answer the bell this week. Um, DeAndre Haynes is a problem, but you need to find opportunities to where he's not double or triple covered on the offensive or defensive line. Um, I think Baltimore is going to get the win. Sadly, the Renegades are going to go 0-3. But I think when they go up against the Snow Tribe, they'll be able to bounce back. Um, to answer your question, Mr. Ground, that game is in Baltimore. Between the yeah, Orange the and, and Renegades. Renegades. Yeah, Washington and Renegades will be down in uh, the D.C. area, yeah. So, um, so... Now, as far as distributing um, that broadcast, how can um, fans watch that game? Because obviously, that game will be going I don't on know at if the that same game time. It's going to be live, but just stay tuned to a7fl.tv or okay. uh, on on social media. I don't know what the DMV does for streaming, but it hopefully will be getting some games live from Baltimore a little bit later on in the season. Okay. I don't know what that is, but yeah. <clears throat> of course, Wolf Ring and just clarifying in Baltimore. Um, TBD, Mr. Brown, to be determined. But for sure, um, the East will bring us for sure the U and BIC on the game of the week and the Snow Tribe. No, I'm sorry, the um, Snow Tribe and the Buzz for sure. So, yep. Again, stay posted, stay tuned. Um, of course, everything you need to know, you can always go to a7fl.com. Now, I want to get your take real quick on the game of the week here in Nevada between the Force and Sick. How do you see this matchup? Obviously, these two teams, the last two times they've played, like I said, the total combined, the total combined points was nine points. So, obviously, these, these games have been close. Um, what are you expecting the third time around between Force and Sick? I feel like Fox needs to prove everything that everybody's been saying about him for the last few seasons. And that this is an opportunity for this team to prove what they've been saying for the last few seasons, that they are one of the top teams in this division. Because if you lose to the if you lose to the sick and you lose to the insomniacs, you become like everybody else. If you're able to split that series, if you're able to walk out and say, "Hey, yo, the insomniacs are the national champions. They beat they beat us. We beat we beat the shit out of them, but they got the win. But we beat the fucking sick with it. We beat sick with it. We got that one. We got Curtis Jones back for fucking jumping shit." We got we got all we got back a little bit of the respect that all these two teams took from us when they took the top of the division last season. I think it comes down to that. I think that the Force have more to gain and coming out of this, they have less to lose. They have less to lose. Because if Sick loses and their trend against the Insomniacs goes the way it has been the last couple of years. Where does that put them? That puts them in a really tough position to get deep into the playoffs. Because 
in the first round, you might be facing one of those two teams, and that's not going to be a fun time. And if you get into the national playoff bracket, I feel like there are some teams in the East that are better than the Force, and we all know that East versus West argument. Now, how do you see that? How do you take hypothetical sick versus East Coast matchups if the Force beat beat sick with it? Because when the Force were out here and on, under a different construction, obviously, when they were the Nevada Division champion, they barely beat the Snow Tribe, who were at the bottom of the division. And they lost to the BIC, who were at the top of the division. So where does that, where does that make, where does they, where do they fall in that conversation? So I really think that Sick have to be as prepared, if not more prepared, than they've been for any matchup this season. And they they need to set the tone. They need to get the ball first. If I'm sick with it, I'm putting Curtis Jones out there on the three on one to start this game and saying, We're gonna we're gonna throw this in your face and we're gonna be kicking your ass down this field for 60 fucking minutes. But the force can stall them, they can run down the field, they can eat the clock, they can dictate the pace. If the force can slow this game down and make it feel like you are running through molasses on a hot day, you're you're shit out of luck. But if Sick can get two, three drives where they're scoring and they get one stop against the Force, who takes six minutes to go downfield, that's fucked. That's going to that's gonna make the... Whoever has to make the adjustment first is going to be the team that loses this game, in my opinion. Because I, it might, it's going to come too late. I think the, that adjustment's going to come too late, and that's going to cost them. I feel like it's going to come down to, again, being healthy. You want to see guys finish the game, and it's not just Fox. You know what I'm saying? There's multiple players from both sides that don't necessarily finish the game that – could be a deciding factor, but like you also, I agree with you when you said I would want, I want to see Sig switch it up and like you said, put Curtis out there. You know what I'm saying? Because in my opinion, Lavish really hasn't been the same since his injury. Um, I feel like he's been explosive. He's definitely, you know, done his his parts as a returner, and he's still a threat, but someone that's hungry and someone that 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 has a lot that they know that they can prove they just not prove but a lot to give why not let it be this game there's a few guys on both sides of the ball and both on both teams that i would love to see be key factors in this in this game and how it, how the shit ends You're not wrong. So here is the, uh, well, here's the whole recap, or not the recap, but here's the uh, slate for this upcoming Sunday. Of course, we got the Golden Script tonight, Buzz and Snow Tribe, the Renegades and the Watchmen, Pit Bosses, the Insomniacs, the Volcanoes against the Chaos, Forced and Sick, of course, the Orb Bowl, as uh, Matt Ryan so um, elegantly calls it, between the BIC and you, Crush against the Octane, Heist against the Explorers, Over the Top versus the Hunters, and that rounds out week number three of the A7FL coming up this upcoming Sunday. And here we go. Hmm. And that could be a very huge factor in that game, Mr. Brown. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. wrong. He's a he's a he 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 literally sets he, he sets the tone for, for every game and he's he's been a leader for any defense that he's been a part of. And even any team he's been a part of, he's always been somebody that speaks his mind and tries to gather up the people that that really gonna ride with him. So I feel like, yeah, it, it's he knows. This is one of them games where even, let's just even say from a competitive standpoint, he's probably tired of losing to them. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, he was a part of, uh, you know, the wins over there with the Insomniacs, but since he's left shit ain't been the same so i feel like this is even one of those games where he might utilize this shit and and really 
go crazy. You're not wrong. Um, he had a very good week one along with Gary Weaver on the defensive end. But again, I think the elephant in the room is can Deion Fox finish the game? And that's the whole I mean, I mean, and that's really it in a nutshell. Can he finish the whole game? And can the force protect their lead? Because again, the last time they played, the force were up 19 to 6. And of course, Knox, you were in that game, you played in that game, you were a part of that comeback to when you guys won by two points. So I mean, for me, I I agree with what Bat said. Whoever has to make the first adjustment wins the game. Yeah. But I just definitely think um who can never take care of the football. I think we'll win this game because it could be that one turnover that changes everything in this particular game. And joining us to give his two cents. Now, Knox, be nice. Just coming off a birthday. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Why? Did you cut your hair? He, Are the locks did. gone? He oh, my did. goodness. Yeah, yeah. Kid. Fuck. Something had to change. He is back to short hair, Corey. <laughs> Going with the uh, little Elvis Presley do there. But just coming up for birthday, of course, he does double duty. Quarterbacks gives analysis from the East Orange Renegades and from the booth with Matt Ryan. And Rob Fabian, the one, the only Mr. Corey Hammonds in the building. Oh, Jesus. Corey, it's, how? It's truly a pop <laughs> door right now. <laughs> Corey, how are the... Knox, how are you, sir? Please. I respect you and congratulations, but no, I just got off. Uh, I just got off the Renegades film where we watched the BIC, and you know I was being blamed. But when you grade it like some anybody that knows anything about football, I would be at minimum an eighty-five, probably a ninety-three. And I made two plays that out of the eighty that I was in, where I made the mistake. So um, I'm in a really great mood. So please just don't start with me. You know me. I don't give a shit if you're in a good mood or a bad mood. That is true. We've well, had remember, to listen remember to your when bullshit. we were first introduced to you, you weren't really a human being. So now you com- you you had the glasses on, you had the the shiesty. So now you completely you did the face reveal, and it, it's it's you're you're like a like a suit now. You're like you you got like like. You oh yeah, you office that. now. Yeah, man. <laughs> you you wearing the black shirt and 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 the black beanie, but bro, you might as well be a fucking penguin at this point, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you you dress in the part to still be hood, but you you can't. You gotta announce. You gotta enunciate your syllables at this point, my friend. Hey, look. You see, I've been trying to be very uh, professional and no, you have my I, I profanity and uh, try not to be so loose at the lip. I don't know. That's why. That's why if I was. That, that's why if I was ever in your position, I would. I would absolutely struggle. Worse than I actually do in games. Even though if you don't know football and saw my stat line of three picks, you would blame me for them. But go ahead. I. I, I clearly said the last time I clicked on the, when I clicked on the game was just happened to be. Let's just say towards the end when it was just over. Yeah, you definitely had more picks than you had completions, sir. No, I completed I twelve swear. passes against BIC, and you I, you have zero. I said when game. I watched, not yet, but again, you don't you you just I didn't watch you just the whole, whole, game. whole listening audience that you don't know how to watch. I didn't watch the. I, I, I clearly job. said I didn't so watch. So you can game. lazily look at a stat line, see that there's interceptions in there, and just say ass, and then go. For no, it. I watched because that's that's what people who don't know football do, and keep keep it up because you're you're obviously uh, identifying yeah. yourself as one of those guys. Why you, you're turning red? Calm down. First, I, I, I have Native you, American you, blood you, in me. You started like off. No, that just happened. No, like no, no, no. He's stuff. just overheating. Right. I'm 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 then, then you then you went a little medium rare, right? Now you're you're starting to be a little well done. All right. So you speak on can we not have some, can football. We have we, we've football listened to, we've I'll listened to you. No, 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 no. You already we have made your football acumen known by saying that when a when an intercepted appears on the stat sheet. Oh, you had more picks than completions. By the way, no, I, I, I have said more picks when I watched the game, and most teams would, and most of the most of reading? the passes that I hey, threw Matt, were you two reading? intended receivers that they missed, not me. By Matt, what you reading? Okay, oh, uh, looks Andy Kaufman. Like Here, Andy book. Kaufman, I hate your guts by my good friend Lynn Margulies. Yeah, uh, I, I, just, I just I just hated the way he right I just now. hated the way he broke that down. I clearly yeah. said when I turned on the game, you had more. Picks, then you had completions. 
So even if you know football and you go back and you review when you threw those picks, all right, you now I'll be I'll be Corey's attorney. You'll, then and, hold on, hold on, Matt, because even you look bored. Why you even look bored? Fucking no, I'm just tired of hearing people talk on top of and, each other. No, oh yeah, I, I understand that, but it was one of those where he didn't have to make it seem like. Like I said, we've listened to him. I've listened to him criticize me. He made a whole fucking post and all this other shit about how you're supposed to block it. I, I've had to be a part of that. I accepted that, right? So again, this is me not being a player. I'm a I'm a viewer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't watch or I wasn't watching any West Coast games, so I happened to turn to the East Coast games. He just happened to be on the screen. I clearly even said when I was watching, I didn't watch the whole game, but from what I saw. He had more picks. Now, I didn't say that determined if he had a shit-ass game. I never said that. But, again, it was one of those where I've had to be a part of his criticism. And I took that. Yeah, but there's a difference I between Corey that. watching your whole game, breaking it down, and having notes instead of you giving a flippant remark about how he had more picks than completions. In so the, it in is kind of that, apples to great in the time on that. that I, was watching, I can though. understand your frustration. I can understand your frustration. There's no frustration. I love Corey, but it's one of those where he cannot say No, you, you can say you love Corey, but then everybody you come out here sick. and kind of he breaks down. Everybody run up, else run up on my guy for absolutely no reason. So Run up on him for what? He took it personal. Don't take it personal. It's not personal. Well, you're the one bringing up the fact that he critiqued your work and went into it, and then you're throwing a shorter more flippant remark than what he wrote about you and we could talk about Corey utilizing a whole bunch of words to explain something that could take a paragraph but i do the same exact thing mm -hmm. so we could quibble on that shit all night long mm -hmm. there's a miscommunication that happened Corey wasn't being heard that's it i'm i'm not i'm not his wife so I'm not gonna sit here and, and and let him, you know, continue to speak like people have said. It's 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 a respect level. I've respected him as an announcer, I've respected him as a broadcaster, I've respected him as a player. This was the time, like I said, in the time that and I keep saying it, in the time that I flipped to the game and I started watching, that's what I saw. I I'm, I'm, I'm aware that, of that. I'm, me, I'm aware of that. Me, this is, this is terrible podcast content. This is terrible content. So All that's right. why I'm saying it seems Corey misunderstood what you were saying. Understood. Dub, what else we got? Um, as we try to increase the peace. Um, basically, that's the uh, problem. Basic, basically, um, Definitely want to thank everybody for chiming in and coming on. Definitely want to thank Matt Ryan for coming on and uh, giving his insight to the BIC and the U this matchup coming this upcoming Sunday, which again, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific on the game of the week. Um, again, definitely hope that uh, Big Rob is able to make it to uh, be on the broadcast with Matt and um, Corey. Corey gets done playing. Is it just going to be you and uh, Rob for the UMBIC, or will you have some? Yeah, else it's going to be me and Rob on Sunday as of now. Uh, just me and Rob. Corey will be down in Baltimore uh, against the Renegades. I mean, right. against the Washington. Jesus, I'm fucking All tired. Right. It's 11 o'clock here in New York. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, no, 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 please. I, I understand. So, um, on this next edition of the 3 on 1 podcast, who you have coming on the show? Yeah, it's uh, live from the emergency room. Me, Big Rob, Corey, and we're joined by Carnell Wachter, a.k.a. KWAC of the Trenton BIC. We go through the top 10 of the three-on-one podcast. A interesting, you would expect our top four, but you may not expect how we structured our top four. Some new names on there and some big, 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 big conversation about the BIC and the U. We get you ready for that one. We talk about some of the stuff going on in the Northeast and or bowl season, baby. That's all you need to know. That's this Friday at midnight for the audio, aka Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific time, wherever you get podcasts, or some point in the afternoon if I have time. Uh, the video version of the podcast drops on a7fl.tv. All right. Well, again, Matt, we always appreciate the time and giving your analysis and, uh, of course, giving us insight of what's going on in.
the northeast um get yourself some rest um as always my friend um, uh, be in good health and look forward <laughs> I, I hope so but always uh my friend be in good health and uh we look forward to the unbic this upcoming sunday be well same to y'all and knox congratulations and dub call the shit out of those games on sunday buddy appreciate thank you sir appreciate, appreciate you, you. All right, that was Matt Ryan joining us for uh, his insight on the UMBIC and giving us some insight back in Northeast. Big man, final thoughts before we put a bow and a wrap on episode number 80. Um, as far as the West Coast division, I'm excited to to to, to see a few games. Um, I mean, hope, um, I'm expecting and I'm hoping uh, that the games can be as exciting that we're, again, we're wanting them to be. Um, as far as what they got going over there, I'm definitely looking forward to that game and I will have it going on wherever I'm at. Cause I expect it to be entertaining. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I expect yes. it to be entertaining yes. and I expect it to go down to the wire. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited yeah, for, the BIC. for the new location. I'm excited for the new location. Um, I'm excited just for everybody to be able to just get back out there after the week we just had. Yeah, it's been a uh, interesting two and a half weeks, uh, certainly for the Nevada division. Um, but of course, for those that are just chiming in, um, my co-host part of this panel, um, Knox25 Live has accepted the position of being the division manager in a seven of Nevada, and he has definitely got a lot of support from it. Um, and we definitely think he will do tremendous and great big things for the players of this division and help enhance the league. So, again, our congratulations to my man's Mr. Only Dads himself, <laughs> uh, <laughs> doing it what it does. Um, certainly like to thank everybody for uh chiming in and, and giving their thoughts and just uh hanging out with myself and Knox. Um, it's not easy trying to do these uh two man panel shows, but. Um, also, thanks to Derek for chiming in earlier on and giving his thoughts on uh, UMBIC. Although we wish we could have got his prediction about the uh, Force and Sig, which is our game of the week in the Game of the Week time slot. So again, at Mather Academy on East Bonanza, that's where we will be hey, hey, this look, look, Sunday. Dab, 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 dab. You, I you said, quick, okay. okay. Take out the H, okay? Take out the H. Take out the H. Take out the H. Please. At you Mater people, Academy, you gonna, have, you gonna have people pulling up somewhere that they ain't supposed to be, and you know a lot of our players probably got bad tags. All right, so they need to know exactly <laughs> where <laughs> they need to know exactly where they're going. At, right? Come on, Mater at Mater Academy. At Mater Academy on East Bonanza is where we will yeah. be this upcoming Sunday. So please come on out, support. Uh, hopefully, La J Tacos will be there. Look here, they coach. Okay. Let's go. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. This is not. This is not Night Rider. All right. Hey, leave me alone. Okay. It's 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 hot out here for a light skin. Anyhow, Mater <laughs> Academy East on East Bonanza is where we will be this upcoming Sunday. Uh, so please again bring your family, bring your kids, come out, have some fun, watch some exciting football again. Um. In our time slots, and we will give you the games one more time. Please stand by. Again, kicking us off will be the Kryptonite against the Gold. Then in the one thirty game is the Insomniacs against the Pit Bosses. And again, in the game of the week time slot, it is the Force and Sick. It should be a fantastic game. And in the nightcap, it will be OTT against the Hunter. So again, you can catch all the action on Caffeine, ASNFL.TV, CSN. HBCU Plus, and of course, our fans across the pond globally on DAZN. So again, thanks to everybody for uh, chiming in on episode 80 of The Other Side of the Ball. Again, um, thanks to uh, Chris and uh, Scotty for uh, watching, being on assignment. Hopefully, we will see them next week. Special thanks to my man, Knox25, for uh, keeping the light skin some company on this episode. And uh, thanks to all of you, the fans and the players. <laughs> thanks to all the fans and players for uh chiming in and uh hopefully you will join us on sunday at mater 
Academy. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And um, well, you what? Come on, Coach. Really? <laughs> hey, I'm just giving you respect because you are a coach. That's just respect to respect. Anyhow, <laughs> special thanks to everybody for chiming in. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Like I said, uh, we appreciate you for uh, subscribing and uh, watching us. And we will be back next week for episode 81 to where we will recap week three and preview week four. But in the meantime, for Knox, for, oh, by the way, tonight, who's uh, coming on the show with you heard with Big and Friends? Go ahead and promote. Uh, We got a chef coming on tonight. We got a chef coming on tonight. Really? Uh, yeah. Be on at nine. Uh, I'm not too sure. I want to say it's just me, Fees, Biggie, and uh, like I said, the chef. Okay, will he be cooking live on the show? Nah, Quan ain't having that in his no. studio. You know that. <laughs> Unless it's you pineapple and hit, pizza. Like, you can't even hit a, a e a e cigarette in that mug. You can't even have no smoke from nothing. There you go. But unless if it's pineapples on pizza, then everything is fair game. I'm just right. saying. He, I, he likes I his, like pineapple. He like, on pizza. He like, I'm not against it. Well, it's a good thing Chris is not here because you guys would be having an argument right now. But anyhow. For uh, again, yeah. you heard with big, you heard, you heard with big and friends tonight at nine on, uh, you heard with big and friends YouTube channel. So please like, subscribe, share, watch, and of course support. Uh, don't forget to check out the All Pro Jaffos on this upcoming Friday. Uh, don't forget to check out the Muslim Dub Show. Um, sometime this week, maybe tonight we might do a show. I don't know, but uh, check us out. But nonetheless, um, for Knox two five. AKA Mr. Only Dads, but now the new division manager of A Seven Nevada. I'm Double A of the Opera, and we say thank you for watching. <laughs> we'll see you on the other side of the ball. You guys take care of yourself. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you next week.